Hello everyone, I am Chase here at Rocky Mountain ATVMC coming at you with our top five most overlooked simple maintenance jobs that any rider can do. So no matter what bike you have, no matter how old it is, as riders, there's one thing we all have in common. We all want our bikes to last as long as possible, we want them to run well, and we just want them to be in tip-top shape. Now that doesn't mean that a lot of us aren't guilty of not performing some of the routine maintenance jobs that are simple on our trusty steeds. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna show you what we think are five of the most commonly overlooked maintenance jobs that are simple that any rider can do. And no, I'm not talking about a top end or a bottom end rebuild, some of your more complicated jobs. I'm talking about simple jobs that any rider can do. You just wanna make sure you have the right tools. You wanna to make sure that you're using your service manual. We have a lot of great how-to videos here at Rocky Mountain, so make sure when it comes to any maintenance job, give those a watch and those are really gonna help you out. Now before we get started, let me just get this out of the way. Okay, when it comes to routine maintenance, you gotta be doing your oil changes and changing your oil filter regularly, okay? That's a must, everyone knows that. So look at your service manual to know how often you should be doing that. And another big one is just changing your air filter. Having your air filter clean is gonna make sure you're getting clean air to the motor. It's just gonna help your bike run better and last longer. So those are very simple. We all know those need to be done, so make sure you're doing those. But to get started, let's get to job number one. All right, so job number one that is often overlooked is greasing your pivot points. And when, when I say pivot points, what I mean by that is gonna be your linkage, your shock, your swing arm, and also your steering stem. Now, when it comes to this, it's a job that I'm pretty sure we all know needs to be done, but doesn't mean that we all do it, especially as often as it should be done. So this is very important with this. And look at your service manual, because they are gonna give recommendations as far as how often you should be doing this. Now, I have a great example of why you should do this more often than most riders do. So I actually have the linkage off of my 18 RMZ 450, and I've actually, the bike has 17 hours on it. I've already taken this off once before and cleaned out my bearings and reinstalled it, but you can see that just after a few hours of riding, you can see how much gunk and dirt and just crap gets built up around the seals. And if that stuff starts to work its way past those seals, well, you're gonna ruin your bearings and nobody wants that. And the same goes for your steering stem as well. I've actually seen riders take linkages out of bikes and they're rusted out. I've seen bearings completely crumble and just fall apart because they're dry, there's no more grease left in there. And if that's the case, your suspension is not gonna work the way it's supposed to, it's not gonna feel good. And honestly, it's really just not that safe to ride with your motorcycle in that type of condition. So it's very important you wanna be doing that, especially with your lower shock. The lower shock where it connects, there's not a lot of grease in there and it's really exposed, it's low to the ground. So that's why you gotta do it regularly. So when it comes to cleaning and re-greasing your pivot points, it's very simple to do. Once you get everything taken apart, I just like to use contact cleaner. I'll spray it all out, wipe it out, clean it up with a rag. And then after that, I'll just use a good high quality waterproof grease. I'll reapply some grease and then put everything back together. It's just very important though that when it comes especially your linkage and your swing arm in those areas, you wanna make sure you're using a torque wrench. Look at your service manual. They're gonna give torque specs, but it's very important that you follow those when you are putting everything back together. So that's the first part of this tip is cleaning and re-greasing your pivot points. Another tip that I have that goes along with this is actually when you're washing your bike. This is something that riders don't think about too often, but if you use a pressure washer, which is what you know I think most riders do, those things are really powerful. So you don't need to get too close to your pivot points points okay that's gonna help keep water out of those out of your seals and that's just gonna help your grease and your bearings last longer but that's gonna be job number one that's often overlooked is greasing your pivot points all right so job number two is gonna be changing your fork and your shock oil now this is a job that I think a lot of riders don't do enough and it's probably because most of us don't change our oil unless our fork or our shock seals are leaking am I right now the problem with this is that I've seen fork and shock seals go a really long time without leaking. In fact, much longer than you should go without changing your oil first. Now you gotta remember that the oil in your suspension, it's the lifeblood, okay? Your rebound and your compression damping is controlled by oil going back and forth between your rebound and your compression valving. And as that gets older, it starts to break down. And as it breaks down, you're gonna lose performance with your suspension. Now this is something that's gonna come on gradually. It's not something that you're really gonna feel one day to the next. And as it comes gradually, you're gonna slowly lose performance and you just won't really know it. But I'm gonna tell you that if you have really old broken down oil and you replace it, you're gonna notice a difference. Your suspension is gonna feel and it's gonna work better. Now you also gotta think about your shock. Your shock is working just as hard, if not harder than your forks, and you have less oil in it. 
So that oil is going to break down even faster. That's why it's so important that you do this as often as your service manual is telling you that you should. Now when it comes to this and you have your forks and your shock taken off and pulled apart, it's never a bad idea to get new bushings and seals in there. Now this is a little bit more of an in-depth process. Okay, It takes a little bit more work, but we have really good how-to videos when it comes to replacing or doing a fork rebuild as well as a rear shock rebuild. So make sure you give those a watch and also your service man is going to give you step-by-step -step instructions as well. But that's going to be job number two is replacing your fork in your shock oil. All right, so job number three, it's probably the easiest and quickest job that we have in our top five, and it is just cleaning and lubricating your cables. So over time, your cables are gonna get dust and dirt inside there, and they're just not gonna feel as good as they did when they were new, especially you know with your clutch cable. If your clutch pulls a little bit harder than it used to be, well, chances are you just got a dirty cable. So cleaning these out, it's gonna make a very big difference. If you've ever felt a cable that's dirty, that's got a lot of junk built up in there versus one that's new, it is a noticeable difference, especially you can have water seep in there as well when you're washing your bike, especially if you use a power washer, that can make it worse. So it's a really good idea periodically to go through and just clean and lubricate your cable. It's very simple to do. All you need to do is just have the right tools. You can do it without tools, but it gets kind of messy. It's kind of a hassle. We have a lot of specialty tools on our website that are designed for cleaning and lubricating your cables. One in particular that I really like is this V3 Cable Luber from Motion Pro. It's very simple to use. What I like about it, it just cleans up the process. So when you're lubricating your cables, you don't get lube anywhere and just keeps it nice and clean and tidy and very quick to do. You just want to have a good quality lubricant. Now when I'm cleaning my cable out, I'll just usually take some contact cleaner and I'll spray it out first, get that dirt and that grime out of there, and then I'll go through some lube. And I'm going to tell you, it makes a big difference. So do yourself a favor, show your steed some love, get in there and clean and lubricate your cables. All right, so job number four is wheel maintenance. Now, what I mean by wheel maintenance is just making sure that your spokes are tightened and torqued correctly and that your wheel is true. Doing this is just gonna add the longevity of your wheels. Now, when it comes to this, this is something I like to do often. I will check my spoke tension before or after every ride, and I just go through it and I just make sure all my, sp my spokes are torqued correctly. Now, when it comes to your torque on your wheels, okay, this is gonna be in your service menu. You wanna look at that because it's important that you torque them to the specifications. You also gotta remember that having your spokes too loose or too tight there are consequences for both, but if you have spokes that are coming loose, your wheel can get out of true, and if it gets too bad, you can do some damage to your wheel and also to the hub. So it's, it's really important that you do check that pretty often. Now your two best friends when it comes to wheel maintenance are going to be a truing stand if your wheel does get out of true, and also a spoke torque wrench. So when you're checking your spoke tension, I will take our spoke torque wrench, this is our Tusk brand, what's nice, you can see you're able to adjust the amount of torque, and then I just go through and I check all my spokes. And what's nice is this, it just gives you the peace of mind, okay, it takes away that doubt that you're not torquing them correctly. They're a little bit more pricey, but I'm going to tell you, probably one of my favorite tools to have because wheel maintenance is very, very important. Now a couple tips that I have for you when it comes to this, if you're relacing a new hub or maybe you've torn your wheel down, you're going to relace it, rebuild it, well it's really important, what I recommend is take a picture of your wheel before you start to rebuild it or you lace up that new hub. And the reason I say that is you can always look at that as a reference to see how your spokes are gonna line up. So I've seen a lot of guys will start to lace up a wheel, they get halfway through and they realize that their spokes aren't lined up correctly and they have to tear it all apart and start over again. So that's gonna take away some of that headache. And also if it's been a while since you adjusted any of your spokes to tighten them or loosen them for that matter and you can't get them to turn, they could just be seized up on there. So it's not a bad idea to put some oil on there and that's gonna help loosen those up. And also when you are lacing up your new wheel or building up your old one, use some anti-seize. That's gonna help prevent your spokes or your nipples from seizing up in the first place. But that's gonna be job number four is wheel maintenance. All right, so fifth and final job, I think I saved the best for last, and it's repacking your muffler or your silencer. Now, the reason I say I saved the best for last is because I see riders go years without doing this. In fact, I know some riders that have never repacked their silencer or their muffler ever. Now, the reason I say it's so important is because you're packing inside your muffler or silencer, not only does it keep the noise down, but it has a lot to do with performance as well. As exhaust is leaving your muffler, it actually comes out in waves, and your packing helps control those waves, which has a lot to do with performance, and also it helps with the scavenging of the exhaust from your engine. Now you can see here, this is actually an old silencer. We just took this off a of YZ250 2004, so it's got some hours on it, but we took it apart, and we put some new packing in there, so it sounds good again, and again, you're keeping that performance. For me, I don't think it does a whole lot of good to go spend a lot of money on aftermarket exhaust or even for your stock exhaust if you're not going to spend some time to repack it and to keep that performance where you want it to be. As your packing breaks down, your exhaust is going to get louder and you're going to lose some of that performance. So 
do yourself a favor, get some new packing if you haven't done it in a while. We have great how-to videos for both four strokes and also your two-stroke exhaust. And also a tip I have is when you're washing your bike, it's very important, you wanna try and keep as much water out as possible because as water gets in, it can break down your packing quicker. So the best tip that I have for that is spend a couple bucks and get an exhaust plug. It just goes right into the end of your exhaust, your silencer, and as you're washing your bike, it's gonna do a really good job of just keeping water out. And there you go, that is my fifth and final job, something we feel is often overlooked but every rider can do, and that is repacking your muffler or your silencer. All right, everyone, so thanks for checking out our top five most overlooked yet simple to do maintenance jobs. Hopefully this will give you a friendly reminder of the maintenance that you need to do on your trusty steed. Now, if you have any questions about anything we talked about today, comment below, give us a call or chat live online. We will get your questions answered. And to pick up any of the products we talked about, click on the link or head over to our website at rockymountatvmc.com. And remember guys, subscribe to us on YouTube because we have a lot of really good step-by-step how-to videos, including videos for all the jobs that we talked about today. Don't forget that orders over $75 ship free. I'm Chase here at Rocky Mountain, and we'll see you on the trails.